Hi, my name is Matt, and welcome to Lessons I've Learned. On today's episode of the podcast, I have my very good friend, one of my past roommates, um, <laughs> the best art teacher in the entire world, um, Taylor Knight. Taylor, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I am doing good as well. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I know that it is your spring break time, so thank you for taking yes. a little bit of time out of your nice resting <laughs> schedule um, to very much me. resting. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, looking back in your life, what is the first ever lesson that you remember learning? It could be something that's like a big thing or a small thing, just like the first thing <laughs> that you remember learning in your life. Uh, okay. One of my oldest memories that I have, I think anyway, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm sure I was really small because I have this memory of like walking by my parents' kitchen table and it was like taller than me or the same height. And my older sister Kaylee was sitting there eating a bowl of cereal. She was eating Lucky Charms, I remember. And I really wanted the marshmallows. And so I was like, give me the marshmallows, please. Um, and she said no, and I got very upset, and my mom was like, you can't always have everything you ask for or want. So that's <laughs> that's my first lesson. You don't very always good. get everything I'm, you want. <laughs> that's good. That's good. I like that. What is your, if you had to choose a favorite charm out of Lucky Charms, what would your favorite charm be? I, I don't know. Um, you, don't, you don't have I'm like a favorite charm? Just I like right now what you saw one. a charm. Um, do you the... do you know the Lucky Charm song? No. What? Heart shot hearts. Oh, I don't. I don't know. I guess I don't do know. Do you know it? Um, hold on. No, 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 no. So it's hearts, stars, and horseshoes, clovers, and blue moons, pots of gold, rainbows, and red balloon. Oh. So, so that's now that I have charms? just li- yes, now that I've listed off the charms, I want the pot of had- gold. <laughs> Good, good, good. I do not blame you. So a, a, just a, a bag of, if, if I could give you a bag of Lucky Charms marshmallows, would you rather the bag of the marshmallows or a bag of the cereal with the marshmallows? Uh, that's a good question. I guess it depends on like, if we, I want to eat it like cereal or if I just okay. want to like eat it. <laughs> if it I, was like I know, could only have cereal, I'd want the whole thing. Okay. But if it was snacks, okay. I want the marshmallows. <laughs> good choice, good choice. <laughs> um, so you touched on your older sister. I know that you are a twin. So um, mm-hmm. what what was that dynamic like sort of growing up having a twin, um, being in a world of people where I feel like the common thing is not being a twin? Like, was there any things that you learned from that? Um, well, I, I mean, I guess it's kind of hard to say because I've always been a twin, so I don't know what it's like Mm -hmm. not to be a twin. And so like what's normal for you is normal for me and, and my sister, Megan. Um, but I guess, I guess a benefit of being a twin is that I always had to like share my space and share my time and, Uh, friendships and everything like that so I feel like I've learned to be more of a uh, I guess an open person because of that for sure um because I we grew up in like a (laughs) we shared a bedroom and it was not a big bedroom if you remember a very small room right um right on top of each other on a bunk bed so um a lot of patience a lot of (laughs) fights absolutely Uh, mostly good times though so what was it like sort of being a twin and then you see movies or tv shows or books where they are portraying the life of a twin like was there anything that you saw that you're like that is not what it's like to be a twin all the time all the time i i don't know if i ever really saw anything and i thought oh they actually get it it's usually super (laughs) weird um Why? And I'm sure, well, I guess it, it's a, each set of twins has their own dynamic, I guess. Uh, and, and we weren't ever really like the twins that would purposefully try to dress up the same all the time. 
uh, and like identify like, hey, I'm a twin. That's who I am. And I know a lot of twins stick to that identity uh, because it's kind of forced on them. My parents didn't really do that. We didn't have the like rhyming names or or anything like that, <laughs> or the, the same letter name. So mm -hmm. I think more often when you what you see in TV and stuff is it's like the most extreme version of identical twins where they're like carbon copies of one another. And then they like grow old and then all of a sudden they're both 85 still living in the same house, which is insane. <laughs> What would be, out of like all of the media portrayals of twin, of twin life, which one was your favorite? Like, is there one that sticks out in your mind that you thought was fun or that you liked the most? Um, I'm like trying to think of what had twins. I mean, I guess my, I really liked watching Sister, Sister. <laughs> I was about to say, so the reason that I asked you that question one. was because in my heart of hearts, I wanted you to say, I really like Sister, Sister, because the theme song was good, because that was it what I really show. wanted you to say. And it was a good show. Yeah, yeah. Was, well, so. and I mean, um, I guess, like, sort of thinking about, like, the parent trap, I'm sure, like, it, like, I'm sure there were lots of things, because I, I, I'm sure there's lots of twin things that I've never seen or like been exposed to as far as like the media side goes but I'm mm -hmm. sure there were lots of things where it was one person playing two people um and so yeah I'm I'm I'm, I'm sure like it was easy to find oh like here's one person that we think is a good actor so we're gonna right. have them like play two people versus like two people that they think are both good actors playing two separate different characters that each have their own wants and desires mm -hmm. and that like aren't actually just the same person. Um, yeah. So I'm sure like there was some authenticity to it because they are two different people. I think people. so. Yeah, I think so. Because yeah, they're, they're, which as we know, twins are two separate people. I mean, I hope everybody knows. A lot of people wait, just assume. I, wait, is that a thing? Is that, wait, is, wait, is that, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're two different people? I, I thought you just like switched. Yeah. Just like switched clothes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I hate to break it to you, there's <laughs> two of us. So growing up, um, you and your sister, um, I know that you guys were both really interested in art and that that was sort of a passion that you guys discovered. Um, and now mm -hmm. you being an art teacher, where did you or when really did you decide to sort of take something that was an interest and a passion and turn it into a career path? Um, being an art teacher, like where, how did that timeline sort of work out? Um, so I didn't really start to think about what I wanted to do for a career, obviously until high school. Um, and it was one of the many times in Justin Harkey's art class, uh, <laughs> That we have never people that and I that don't know he was our high school art teacher. Yeah. And what years did you have him? I had him every year <laughs> that I went in high school. So what what years were we in high school? Um, um at the high school it was seven? it would have been tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. Right. So so two thousand eight to two thousand eleven, two thousand seven ish. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, yeah, that time frame. I had him each year. Um, so I, I think it was like my junior, my senior year, where I was just talking about how I didn't really, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, and he was like, "Well, why don't you become an art teacher?" And then I thought that's a really good idea because I love art. Um, I'm good at it. I like to help people and I really wanted to be uh, what he was to so many students and still is I wanted to be that for my own students uh, so he really inspired me for that very nice and so um, what was the experience like doing um, pursuing that path in college mm -hmm. versus just like 
oh, I enjoy art. I like drawing. I like painting. Like, what right. is it like taking something that I think sometimes people look at it as, oh, like, it's just drawing or like, whatever. Like, right. what is it like actually doing that in a collegiate um, environment? Well, I think your average everyday person doesn't really know the, the like, technical side of making art. And uh, there are right, right and wrong ways to do things. Um, whether it's drawing or painting or sculpting or ceramics or, you know, any of that stuff. Uh, and in college, they really focus on that. So um, it was kind of intense because in college, your art classes are like two and a half hours long, twice a week. And then you're expected to be in that studio many hours outside of that classroom. So it was kind of a challenge at the beginning of my collegiate experience uh, figuring out how to balance that, especially when we were at Rose State, uh, balancing all the extra curricular activities that we were doing since we were in that leadership program. So uh, it's, it was kind of, it's hard. It takes a lot of time uh, to become proficient in something. And then it takes even more time to become good enough at every medium to be able to teach it to other people. And if you want to be an art teacher, you have to know a, at least, you know, this much about every type of medium um, to be, to be an art teacher. Cause you got to teach it all. You can't just say, Hey, I like to paint. So I'm only going to teach you how to paint. <laughs> right. What is your, um, what is your preferred medium to express art in? Like personally or to teach? Yes. Personally. Yes. Um, so I, I'm a painter. Um, I like acrylic paint. I like watercolor. Um, I've been experimenting a lot with watercolor recently. Uh, and it's, it's a pretty fun. So I would say right now it's watercolor painting, but it does change over time. Depending and on then the mood. What is your favorite um, medium to teach in? I love teaching ceramics. So ceramics is clay, pottery, um, sculpture. I love teaching kids how to throw on the pottery wheel. It's always really funny to me. It's hard, but people think it's really easy. Um, and most students, most kids, they don't really get their hands on clay. And it's not really a common thing for you to like go out and do, whereas you could easily find all sorts of different alternative ways to like, if you want to paint, you know, uh, clay is a lot harder because there's a lot more stuff that goes into it. So I think it's really fun to, to work with that in my classrooms. And it's one of my favorite mediums personally to work with as well. With being an art teacher, how have you had to sort of adapt within this last year, like because of the pandemic? Um, it's not just like, okay, here's this assignment that you can just go online and complete it. Like if somebody has a ceramics assignment, how do you teach that virtually? Right. Um, okay. So my high school that I'm teaching at for the pandemic last year, we went online, uh, for, you know, when it started, uh, and then that kind of switched to like found object sculptures. Cause it was, nobody was expecting us to, you know, go into quarantine, uh, last year. But as the school year started, we've been back in person since August. Um, so I'm one of the few school districts, school districts in Oklahoma that actually went back. Uh, so with that half, not much changed because in an art classroom, we're used to like cleaning up constantly every day anyway. I'm like using soap and water and, and you know, disinfectant, Clorox wipes, whatever. So on that kind of side of things. Nothing changed, but we did have to deal with students going into quarantine, you know, over and over and over again. Um, you know, sometimes it's just like an unlucky student who has to do like back to back and then I don't see them for like two months. Um, and with those, I just try my best to work with them because some parents will say like, hey, yeah, I want to come and pick up like studio supplies for them to work at at home, whereas other students are like, no mom and dad don't want me to have clay or whatever. Uh, so it's, it's really different for each situation. So the ones that can't work with art supplies, um, I usually do more of like an art history type lesson. Uh, so it changes every week <laughs> what I do with those Spe students. Speaking of art history, like what is one of your favorite parts about art history 
um, that maybe like somebody who isn't necessarily versed in that field would know? Um, okay, so I, I think, <sighs> let me try to think one of my favorite. Uh, one of my favorite, I, we'll let somebody won't know, I guess people know like I impression mean, even if somebody does know that's okay too well okay so my favorite is impressionism like my favorite art movement in art history and style and so like your impressionism post-impressionism like those are like your famous artists like van gogh monet degas painters things like that um i really liked how the colors started to show up a lot more and how everything became well, more of an impression of things instead of actual like hyper realistic mm -hmm. imagery. Um, so I love that. And then I also love this art movement that was called Dada. Uh, and I'm not going to go into it because it's a lot, but I highly suggest looking it up <laughs> sometime. Um, that's usually something people don't know about. It's like this art movement that was trying to not be an art movement, but turned okay. out to become an art movement. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's confusing. <laughs> How do you spell it? D A D A da da. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So an art movement yeah. that was that became an art movement, but was not trying to be an art movement. Right. Very, okay. Their whole thing is, it, is that this is not an art movement. <laughs> they were trying to fight against <laughs> art movements, and it became very one, interesting. So. Very interesting. It's, yeah. yeah. It's like um, it's like creating a political agenda because you don't like political agendas like yes it's very, very similar to that yeah <laughs> very nice um <laughs> so what is something that like as you become a teacher because you've been teaching for three years now is that right i've been teaching for four years now oh okay so as, so as yeah. you've been teaching now for four years um what like what is something that you've learned during this process <laughs> I've learned a lot of things. Or, I mean, um, like, so, you know, just like one of the many thousands and thousands of things that you've learned. <laughs> so my teaching career has been kind of crazy um, because I think it was it the second year I was teaching. Okay, so when I started teaching, I came in mid-school year. All right, so that was kind of a challenge as I was taking over somebody's position. So these students already had like a relationship with this teacher. Uh, so that was like really hard um, to kind of build that respect, right? Because they're like, oh, you're just a replacement. Um, but then I had the teacher walk out the next year. And then um, I've moved classrooms like three times. And now I'm in my like permanent classroom home. Uh, and then now, I mean, all of the COVID stuff. So those are like big challenges that we've had to overcome just, I guess, as a whole, really in education. But mm. what I've personally learned uh, through teaching um, is that the biggest, I guess, most important thing to be a successful teacher anyway uh, is the relationships that you build with your students. You know, you can be like a really great teacher and have a lot of knowledge about your subject area. But if you don't have a relationship with those kids, they're not going to retain any of that information and they're not going to care about your class. Um, and I mean, even if you do have a relationship, they still might not care about your class, but they they'll like participate and be, you know, right. in the class. But I think uh, the biggest thing I've learned is relationship, building those relationships and um, patience. I mean, patience and patience. And then I teach in high school. And so you, even though they're like teenagers, um, you always, I always have to remind myself, like, these are still like children. They, right. when, when they're not understanding things that you think like, come on, like, how do you not get this? It's because they're, they're still kids. They're still children, even though right. they're teenagers. A lot of people, I think, forget that about those older kids. Would you say that like, I mean, because it, it it seems like those lessons that you, like that you've learned within the classroom are even lessons that sort of translate really well outside of the classroom. Like taking that patience that you yes. learn in that classroom setting and then applying it when you're standing in line and you're frustrated. Yes, <laughs> yes, they're definitely uh, transferable. I use that. I, I mean, I think I'm much more patient in my everyday life than I was four years ago. I mean whether it's 
like you said, standing in line or in my personal relationships with my friends and um, my significant other or, you know, things like that. I don't have patience when I'm driving. That's my one area where I let myself get frustrated, get a little road rage. Um, oh, and then I don't have patience when it comes to my twin, Megan. But that's okay. <laughs> she knows that. I, we know that. It's fine. Um, I feel like you've you've sort of touched on this as you've talked about your sort of experience with teaching and um what you sort of take from that, but like, what is your favorite thing about teaching? My favorite thing about teaching? uh, Well, again, it's the relationships. Um, You, I mean, you get to meet so many different types of people uh, and it's exciting to watch them grow, like having them as a freshman and then seeing them as seniors and seeing kind of like their growth as people um having good relationships with students to the point where they can like come and talk to you if they're having a bad day uh or if they like (laughs) randomly want my help in their math class I can't help them um but they still ask you know so I I think that's one of my favorite things specifically as an art teacher I love seeing that like problem solving skill like the light bulb go off uh, when they're working with something and like not getting it. And then all of a sudden getting it, they get so excited and they get proud of themselves. And I really like to see that happen. It's one of my favorite things to witness. I feel like art is one of those skills that, um, and I mean, you, you're going to have, um, more of ground to sort of expand upon this one, but I feel like it's one of those things that the more you just sort of do it, the better you sort of get at it. Um, what are, Um, like what are other things that you found in life that because you sort of have practiced this skill of practicing that you think translates well, like, are there other things that you feel like you've gotten better at because you sort of honed in on this skill? That's a good question. Uh, I haven't really ever thought about that. I mean, it definitely, it's funny because I, I say that to my students all the time, like, Hey, you might not care about art, but I'm teaching you problem solving skills that you're going to do and everything else. Um, so I think I see that a lot. Well, with just like your everyday thing, maybe you're like working on the computer and something's not working correctly. Well, instead of me, like trying to instantly, I don't know, call like geek squad or something, I'm going to try to figure it out myself, which I think that's also with our generation, people are doing that. Um, but (laughs) I can't think of like super specific situations because I've never really thought about that before um but problem solving skills over and over and over again is what gets you I mean that's how you learn anything it's any skill right right it's any skill well and it's like um it's sort of like with theater like something that I've talked about um pretty reoccurring with other people that have done theater like yeah maybe you're not performing constantly but those skills of working with other people, meeting deadlines, speaking in front of mm-hmm. people, like those are skills that translate really well into a lot of other oh, yeah. areas. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. And I mean, as you know, I love theater. I'm a big support <laughs> of theater, theater departments, things like that. Um, but yeah, I think, well, and what's also with art specifically is you learn uh, a lot more of like a hand-eye coordination because you're usually working, mm-hmm. you know, on your finer motor skills. And a lot of people, you don't really think about that, um, but you are kind of growing strength in your hands and uh, whether it's drawing or painting or sculpting, um, having an idea, you have to figure out how you're going to use your hands to make that idea come to fruition. So I guess it could be the same thing for any skill, whether you're like learning an instrument or learning how to speak, Mm -hmm. or you have an idea for, I don't know, a business. Like you got to figure out what, what are the steps I need to take to get there? And you do that in art. It's just steps. You follow steps. If, if somebody is interested in sort of taking um, steps to pursue 
um, becoming an art teacher or becoming sort of a teacher in a more like creative field, what are some things that you think that you have done that would translate well into the path for somebody else, whether it's them wanting to be an art teacher or maybe wanting to um, just pursue something that isn't the typical, oh, I'm going to go and work behind a desk. Like, what are some, like, what's some advice that you think that you could give to someone? Do it. Um, here, and here's why. <laughs> uh, if you have even like a, just a small percentage of you, like, or a part of you that's like, I really want to go do this. I don't want to do my typical desk job. Um, you're never well, going to be also, happy doing a desk job. And also, let me say that I, um, as I said, sitting behind a desk, I don't want to um, ever discredit somebody wanting to do that. But oh, I yeah. feel like it's more so often yeah. people feel like they're having to settle for something like that versus like, I feel like there's right. very few people that are like, oh, I've right. got to settle. I'm going to go be an art teacher. Oh, I've got to settle. I'm going to go pursue my dream of being on Broadway. Like usually that's the thing that people are like, don't go do that because you're not going to be able to do that successfully. Right. So that's, that's my one caveat that I wanted right. to say <laughs> and no, interrupt you. I agree I'm sorry, completely. Continue. There's definitely people who are better suited to be in a more traditional career, I guess is the best way to say that a desk job. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's people who aren't. And that's fine, right? That's how we have a functioning society. Uh, but my advice is to do it. A lot of people will tell you no, and especially if you want to go into like a teaching field. A lot of people are going to say, well, there's no money in that. That's what you're going to hear the most. Uh, they're not wrong, <laughs> but I have fun every day. I, I don't dread going to work. My days go by fast. I have so many different conversations. I have creative outlets. So I highly suggest doing that. Look for different institutes, whether it's like a vocational school or college. Um, look at different programs to see how you can get there. You know, there's there's multiple ways you can get things done. Um, if you want to be a teacher, you know, figure out what college has the best teaching program, what college, you know, has the best program for, you know, what what I'm specifically trying to do. Um, don't be afraid to actually do it because I have, I don't regret it at all. Um, I don't think I would thrive in a traditional environment. Like, sure. Yes. I do a lot of desk work. There is a lot of that, like behind the scenes, um, thing with teaching, but most of my days are filled with helping teaching me, making my own art. Um, I mean, it's fun. I I highly suggest it. <laughs> so Taylor, as we're sort of, um, sort of closing down and winding down here, I wanted to ask you, what is something that you are learning about yourself right now that maybe you're not really sure what the lesson is, but just the culmination of this past year and where you're at in your life? Like what's something that you're sort of finding out about yourself? Um, so I know I, I joked with you earlier that I'm finding out I have anxiety. I didn't really know I had anxiety until all of this. Um, so kind of learning that about myself and kind of seeing what my, like how that manifests in me and what that looks like and then how to handle it has been a huge, sorry, my kitten just crawled into my lap and started <laughs> licking my fingers. I mean, that's okay. That's a show the kitten. Hello. Um, yes, this is Padme. <laughs> um, she always wants to be in my lap if I'm at my desk. Uh, What's her what name? What was I saying? <laughs> uh, you Padme? were saying um, Padme? Is yeah. that from Star Wars? Yes, it is. Cody named her. Oh, I, I am. I am. I'm such a Star Wars fan. <laughs> um you so you were saying you know so much. um that you really i i am a star wars expert <laughs> ex expert i have expertise in star wars yeah um you were just saying that you within the last year you sort of have started to realize that you have anxiety and how that manifests and um mm. the ways that right. you sort of combat that 
Yes. Um, so I, I just try to like take when I'm starting to feel anxious, I always just try to like give myself some time to be by myself, to like ground myself. Um, whether that's like meditating or, uh, you know, just trying to be like mindful. Um, I've breathing exercises, Mm -hmm. things like that. Our school has done like a really good job. Well, our district has done a really good job of like, uh, showing us different tools to Mm -hmm. kind of help alleviate those things. Cause they're, they do recognize that uh, their teachers have a lot of (laughs) stress and anxiety during this. Right. Um, but that's definitely something I've learned about myself through all of this. Uh, and, you know, that's okay. Cause I'm handling it. Well, I'm trying to, but I mean, that, most of the time I'm pretty good. Sometimes attempting to handle is, is, the, all doing is that. the best you can do in a situation. And that's okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. just like taking it a day at a time and um, realizing you don't have the answers. And sometimes you just have to be yeah. like, I'm doing the best I know how to do in this moment. That's just yep. what I'm going to have to do. Yep. And that's fine. Yeah. That's something as a teacher, I like when I go to work, the students, for the most part, assume that you just know everything uh, and how to handle everything and do everything. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Fake it till you make it. I, so that is like I like I would say um it was it was it was really interesting when I hit the point to where I realized like oh my parents are just people like wandering around on yep. this rock yep. in the middle of space just like I am um yep <laughs> and like that like in a way it's almost like oh nobody really knows what they're doing but in a way it's also mm-hmm. like okay like nobody knows what they're doing just let me do the best that I can yeah um, so, yeah, you're exactly that's right. That's how you can do sometimes. Taylor, thank you yeah. so much for joining me today. I know that you mentioned earlier that you do commissions and things along those lines. Um, so I if do. anybody was interested in reaching out to you to finding out um, about some of your commission work, they can go onto your Instagram at T Lou Knight. That's T L O U K N I G H T. Is that correct? Yep. Perfect. You are correct. Um, you are also <laughs> on Facebook, Taylor Knight. Um, so you can reach out to her as well. Um, make sure to reach out to her if you need any commission work done. I know um, I've seen some of her work and it is fantastico. Um, I don't know if that's a There's word, but we're right just going to go with it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, so, Behind yeah, Taylor, me. thank you so much. <laughs> Um, yeah, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you sort of hanging out with me today. Um, and I hope to see you sooner rather than later. Yeah, Um, me too. Anyone that's listening, um, feel free to share this podcast and don't forget to subscribe. Um, give me five stars. Um, I would appreciate that so much. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for listening. And I hope that you tune in for the next episode.